okay guys I'm back um, haven't been doing any videos on my channel for the last month or so because I've actually been in Europe most of that time I was a member of an archaeological expedition primarily in central Italy we visited 22 different sites really doing a lot of exploration um, I'm just trying to determine uh, the type of cultures that were there some idea of uh, timeline etc that they were existing blah 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 so um, I've been away from I've been thinking a lot about Mandela effect and even beyond that ascension and what the bigger or the larger picture of Mandela effect is all about um, I didn't really get a chance to look at a lot of videos and stuff like that because where I was for the most part there was an internet um, we went to like tw like I said 22 different sites and um, a lot of them were just out where there was just no internet so um, however um, there were 10 of us on this expedition and two of them were Americans the rest of them were Europeans from various Slavic countries um, Italy um, Australia various places and um, what's interesting is that a few of them that I've talked to um, were and are experiencing the Mandela effect in their country because I know there's been some talk about maybe it's only happening in America or English speaking countries and one of the things that a couple of them explained to me is that the reason why the product change they don't think is are, are as prevalent is because if you change like one letter in a lot of their languages it changes the complete meaning of the word like in our case you know you can change a letter let's say um like because a lot of ours has um sounds to the to syllables as well so like fruit you know is the same f-r-o-o-t as f-r-u-i-t because f-r-o-o-t really isn't a word so it can um you know we have more um words that um, sound alike and are spelled differently so um, but they were finding that happening with songs that they knew in their language was one way and then all of a sudden it's changed now so there has been some of this phenomenon that's been noticed so I just want to throw that out there but today's video and I have a number of videos I'm gonna make but today's video is about what I actually think the Mandela effect is I've been spending a lot of time on that because you know we can go around and around on this product this new thing has popped up this new person is back to life this new event happened or didn't happen and then we can get all these debates about is it a Mandela effect or is it not a Mandela effect is it a Toto effect is it this is it that so and then we can go back and forth and then there can be division around that stuff because then no I think it's this no I think it's that and I've noticed that's even started with some of these Mandela channels like really people who are really cool people very interesting the fact that they even come out and started making these um, videos are awesome I think that their awakening and their awareness and sharing it with others is helping others but you know to start getting into pulling each other's videos apart well you know I don't think that really is a Mandela effect and all that I mean that's counterproductive you know let's just keep moving forward because clearly there is something going on you know and I've noticed also on the videos that I put up on my channels the ones that have that are like more controversial or more almost kind of like in a way could be gossipy or something oh I get zillions of views the ones in which I feel like it, it's better content like my QHHT sessions which was done in a hypnotic trance um, I had no idea of what information was coming out of me is well really more consistent with quantum physics with um, you uh, with um, unity consciousness theory with um, uh, a lot of the old Vedic um, religions, the idea of oneness, and the idea of us all being a part of a, con a larger consciousness pool. Those, I mean, I have like maybe um, 400, 500 views on those. So it also tells me that part of the idea of symbols changing and stuff like that are designed to help wake people up and then as people get awake and they go a little deeper down the rabbit hole and want to look at some of the other videos that 
um, may, and I think that I've heard other people say this on their channel and I've looked at other people's views and the ones that I think are their best vi videos actually have the less views, interestingly enough. So this is not a criticism or anything. It's more of an observation that's saying that first we have to wake up. Then once we wake up, we have to start wrapping our mind around what this material, what actually is happening. And then as you start wrapping your mind around what's happening, you can kind of go deeper and deeper into your own understanding about that. So, I mean, it's actually fine. Um, it's just like coming to our awareness, you know what I mean? And I actually have a video where I'm going to do on the stages, I think, of this whole awakening process. Because I just looked back over my life over the last few years and I started seeing these clear stages of where I was beginning to just have more and more opening of my consciousness. But today, I want to talk about what I kind of think this Mandela effect could be. Now, I'm going to try to explain it as clearly as possible. Um, go a little easy on me, guys, you know, because I'm trying to put it out here and wrap my mind around it as well. Um, a lot of this has just come to my feeling world, also uh, based against my own experiences. Um, a lot of it has to do with some of my lucid dream time um, information that's coming through. So this is really nothing that I've heard anyone else say. It's a compilation of, I believe, um, theory and belief systems that are age old, you know. And I think it's coming back around with this whole idea of the Mandela effect. But if I'm not as clear as you guys would like me to be, I mean, I'll do more videos on this. Just go a little light on me. Because some of you guys can be sending me some love letters that um, let me know that you're still out there loving on me. <laughs> so. Oh, boy. Love you guys. So, anyway... I believe that the Mandela effect is actually our ascension. I think it's our ascension happening unlike any way that any religion has ever said it would happen, unlike the New Age community said it would happen, unlike the rapture from Christianity said it would happen. I think we're ascending, guys, honestly. I think that we're going from the third dimension to the fifth dimension, and we've heard about that. We know that at the end of this 25, 26,000 year cycle, that the there's an evolution that always happens. We've heard about this time immoral, but um, we're at the end of that cycle. And so this is how I think it's working. We were on the third dimension. Then... Um, with a lot of the cosmic and galactic energies that were coming in, let's say with 2012, different things like that, I believe there was a shift. And um, that's when we started noticing some glitches. We really, I mean, I, the acceleration of them. I noticed stuff in the early 2000s. I can go back that far, definitely with the Bernstein thing. But as, a, as a, an accelerated awareness, I think that we began to um, do that here in more recent years and I think that um, that's when and I think it's really just a divine uh, incredible plan that the creator God um, you know conscious energy of the universe whatever you want to call it we all know what I'm talking about that universal thought you know that spark the creative point at which all things spark and began has this incredible way of waking us up. And it's like a huge gain, really. And so, as we move into the fourth dimension, that's when you start seeing the Mandela effects. The Mandela effects, to me, means that we have merged into the fourth dimension. And the, that's why I think we're starting to see more of these every day, every week, more and more, because our consciousness is waking up more and more into the fourth dimension, where this wonderful, incredible kind of game is going on. And in a way, you know, people can say, oh, you know, sometimes it's a little scary when you're first dealing with it because you know, you know that there's an altering of your consciousness going on. And you know that the world around you looks differently. The colors don't look as bright. Um, people seem like they're acting stranger and all these things. So we know, we know that this is going on and it can be a little bit frightening, right? But then it's also sometimes for me and I hear other people say, it's kind of funny, you know, like, you're like, oh, really? 
Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops, really, you know, um, there's a lot of humor in it as well. So how do I see this working? And I think that the fourth dimension is a bridge to the fifth dimension. And the fourth dimension gives us an opportunity to work out a lot of the kinks from the third dimension and prepare ourselves for more fifth dimension consciousness, which that's why I think that time, we're able to start manipulating time better. You know, when you want it to go fast, it goes fast. When you want it to go slow, it goes slow. Um, we're manifesting resources. Some of us are manifesting. Some of us, it's being taken from us because it's, it's, it's um, in line with our consciousness right now. So if you have a lack or a limit, a limit, kind of consciousness you're kind of taking your resources from you through your thinking through your conscious behavior and if you believe that you have enough you've always had enough you, you know you got enough to go around you're manifesting and I've had a number of people send me um, comments demonstrating how they're manifesting and they were shocked every time it was happening they didn't know what was going on and other people are saying I'm losing money I don't know how it's happening but I'm losing it you know, so the fourth dimension, we through our conscious um, faculties, we are able to control matter in the fifth dimension. So the fourth dimension is allowing us to be, be, begin to be prepared for the manipulation of this matter because you can imagine if you can think things like that, you go from the third to the fifth, all of a sudden you just manifest all over the place. That could be a huge mess in a lot of our lives. Um, it's also creating tolerance. It's it's creating more, I feel, brotherly love. It's allowing us to be more tolerant of other people's ideas and opinions. When somebody is on a, a YouTube video and is distraught because the Mandela effect has happened to them and they just can't place it and everything about the core of their being, you just get it that they are, in fact, that they are, in fact, um, having a difficult time, you know, you sense it, you feel it, you know that they are, you know, you can say, oh, I don't believe it, or that sounds weird, or um, that's not my reality, but something deep down inside of you is saying, that person's not making it up, though. So it's causing us to be a little bit more, I think, tolerant and bringing us more to unity consciousness because in the fifth dimension i believe we definitely have to see ourselves as everything around us i have to see myself as you you have to see yourself as me you know i have to see the plant the rocks and the trees in me i mean you know we just have to be a begin to unite with mother earth because the earth is ascending and as she ascends the only thing she's taking with her are things that are vibrating at the same frequency so in order for us to ascend, we are raising our frequency to be in alignment with the planet. And so, um, that being said, I do believe that the third dimension will pass away. I do believe that there are people who are in the third dimension who wants to stay in the karmic cycle. Nothing wrong with that. We've all been in the karmic cycle for a long time. I think there, there are those of us who don't want to be in the karmic cycle anymore we've done it enough we're ready to move on to other dimensions but there are those who are making the choice that they want to go back through the death process and reincarnate and so i believe that that is going to happen on a, th a 3d planet um nothing wrong with that guys i'm not this is not about judgment at all it's what i feel is an observation and so when they do, there may be some kind of cataclysmic thing that will happen to the planet and everybody will just cycle, recycle off and go back into other kind of karmic um, relationships, alignments, choices. While that happens, I think those of us who are, are ascending and are in this fourth dimension and becoming fir firmly planted on it, will continue to ascend and before we know it just like we ended up on the fourth dimension waking up one day and starting to see all these mandela effects i do believe there's going to come a day that our consciousness has ascended enough to, to for us to exist the larger part of our consciousness in the fifth dimension that we will wake up one day and the sky will be more blue and more beautiful than it ever was in the third dimension. The sun is going to be glorious. The moon is going to be fantastic. 
plants, trees, birds, fruit, vegetables, everything are going to be at that next level of consciousness. And we're just going to wake up and they're going to be like, wow, the sky is looking blue again. You know, hmm, this apple tastes better. And then it's going to hit us. Wow. You know, we've made another change. We've ascended again. And so why do I think we're in a dimension where like people are acting more aggressive and those kind of things we talked about because I believe like many of the ancient sages is that you know we a part of us exists on all the dimensions at one time and to point to Einstein's theory of relativity and um, simultaneity of time and the time really isn't linear we just use it this linear time construct in the three third dimension in order to just make sense of it but we're really happening everything's happening at one time and that there are layers on top of layers that being the case that means we are all in, we're in all the dimensions at the same time so we're in let's say it's commonly believed that there's 12 dimensions so we're in all 12 dimensions at one time it's just that until we continue to erase our consciousness or ascend our consciousness, we're not aware of all those dimensions or we only may be aware of them sometime or maybe during dream time. And so our physical, there's a physical or a, not so much physical, let's say in terms of an actual material body, because I think as we go up into dimensions, the representations of ourselves change, but there's a representation of ourselves on every dimension. So there's still a representation of ourselves on the third dimension. There's one here on the fourth dimension and there's one on the fifth dimension. I believe for those of us who are really waking up into this Mandela um, effect thing, that right now more of our consciousness is actually on the fourth dimension. We still have a little bit on the third dimension and we have some on the fifth dimension. Um, those of those who we're running into on this fourth dimension who are just aggressive and crazy and say all the wrong things and are mean and run you off the road and throw up the bird and you know all the stuff we talked about I believe that they're really still existing more on the um, third dimension and only a, a representation of themselves is on the fourth dimension and part of their consciousness is here so of course they are only going to see in their fourth dimensional mind so of course they're going to say it's always been um, Berenstain. It's always been, you know, Ford with the little curly Q. It's always been these things because they only have a limited amount of consciousness that's up here looking around. And for them, that is what is going on. And they're not bringing their memory from the third dimension up into the fourth dimension yet. That's why I think we have spouses and and children and what have you that when we first woke up to the Mandela effect they weren't seeing it no matter how much you pointed out to them they weren't seeing it and then one glorious day they had their own Mandela experience and they come running in and say oh, I see what you mean this must be in a Mandela effect they finally were able to start bringing enough of their consciousness up into this fourth dimension that they had a memory for something in the third dimension that they can now line up with the fourth dimension but until you do that, you're just arguing, you know, with people who aren't going to see it. And it's nothing against them. It's just they're not going to see it because they haven't been able to bring their memory. They haven't been able to bring enough consciousness up into this body that's existing in the fourth dimension to be able to bring their memories with them. It's just like during dream time, you know, we've dreamt forever. For a long time, people say, I don't remember my dreams or I don't dream. You know, well, then we find out everybody does dream and then people start remembering pieces of their dream. And now, so many people are into sponta spontaneous lucid dreaming, which means not only have you become lucid, you bring so much of your dream time back with you. They weren't doing that. Even so a lot of people say they weren't even doing that six months ago who write me on my channel. So, you know, if that can happen, then I believe that what I'm postulating as an ascension theory is also happening. And right now, we're on, if there's a part of ourselves on the fifth dimension, with, and we're over there acting on the fifth dimension like people are acting on the third dimension with us. We're probably up there cutting up right now. You know, oh no, I don't, you know, you know, I can't, I don't see why you could just manifest 
that house out of thin air. That's not possible, you know? I don't know, you said you did it, but you must have built it, you know? <laughs> Whatever, we're cutting up, trust me. So until we get our consciousness fully activated and implanted in the fifth dimension, we're still learning how to operate in the fifth dimension. So I personally don't think it's anything to be fearful of, and I really debunk CERN having anything to do with this. Do I believe the CERN is active? Possibly. I feel we've been filled, you know, the, the powers that be has filled us with so many lies. They've had so many glory machines that can go to the moon, that can land on Mars. We've got pictures and footage of all this stuff happening. You know, spacecrafts that can transcend, you know, the various uh, uh, atmospheric layers and blah, blah, blah. To only find out that that ain't been true. So CERN can be a big NASA project, spaceship, you know, can do more than anybody can ever think it can do. Um, lie as well. Because none of us really know what CERN is doing. We only know what we've been told CERN can do. And we've only been told, we only know what physicists and, you know, um, plasma uh, physicists and everything have been able to describe to us what's happening, but we don't really know. Just like we include the Earth um, land masses changing as a part of the Mandela effect. Now, I'm not saying that I don't see maps on this um, dimension that look different. Yeah, they do look different, and I, there are parts of it that I remember differently. 